You step on the surface of the moon. It's unusual. You definitely feel lighter here, and it's easier to walk. You decide to check out that obsessive idea of yours. Jump on Earth's natural satellite. And even despite your bulky spacesuit, you literally fly up into the air. Woohoo! Anyway, you continue your walk on the surface of the moon when you feel something strange. The ground under your feet is… is it shaking? It feels as if an earthquake has just started on the moon. But that's simply impossible. Or is it? Surprisingly, your gut feeling hasn't let you down this time. Moonquakes do exist. In fact, there are four types of moonquakes that are strong enough to be detected from a large distance. There are deep moonquakes occurring more than 430 miles below the surface. Then there are meteoroid impacts. Thermoquakes occur when the frigid lunar crust expands. It happens when the morning sun illuminates the satellite after a two-week-long deep freeze lunar night. And there are also shallow moonquakes. They're the only ones that are similar to earthquakes on our planet. Shallow moonquakes happen 12 to 19 miles below the surface, and they're the most powerful and dangerous. Between 1972 and 1977, the Apollo Seismic Network recorded 28 such moonquakes, and some of them measured more than 5 on the Richter scale. On Earth, such an earthquake is strong enough to crack plaster and move heavy furniture. Plus, shallow moonquakes are very long-lasting in compared to earthquakes. Once they get going, they can continue for up to 10 minutes. As for the average earthquake, it typically continues for 10 to 30 seconds. Scientists are still not sure what causes shallow moonquakes, and even where exactly they occur. One of the theories is that moonquakes happen at the rims of large, relatively young craters that probably slump from time to time. Interestingly, the Moon and Earth aren't the only places where earthquakes occur. No, scientists have recorded quakes, tremors, vibrations, and shakes in other regions of our solar system, too. Let's take Mercury, for example. A few years ago, scientists discovered that this planet was shrinking, and that's why it seems to be so tectonically active. Or Venus. This world is a tectonic puzzle for experts. At the moment, Venus has no tectonic plates, and it might have never had them. But its surface has folds and faults and looks as if it could have tectonic plates. On the other hand, these features might have appeared because of other processes, for example, volcanic activity. But even though we haven't observed any Venus quakes, scientists believe they could detect them since their vibration seems to ripple through the thick atmosphere of the planet. Now, Mars. We know for sure that this planet is seismically active. NASA's lander placed a seismometer on the surface of the red planet. And in 2019, it managed to measure its first Mars quake. After that, the lander continued to record quakes. But they were so weak that if they happened on our planet, they'd be completely covered by the background noise of Earth's oceans. But a space body doesn't have to be a full-fledged planet to have active tectonics. Let's take Pluto. This dwarf planet is geologically active at the moment. In 2014, NASA's New Horizons spacecraft was flying through the Pluto system when it recorded complex geological features on this dwarf planet. Scientists concluded that Pluto might have quakes, or should I call them Pluto quakes, when its liquid water ocean freezes and thaws beneath the dwarf planet's icy crust. Jupiter's moons Europa and Io, as well as Saturn's moons Titan and Enceladus, are also geologically active despite their small size. Their features range from volcanoes and water plumes to potential subsurface oceans. Now, I bet you don't know these cool facts about earthquakes that occur on our planet. There's one place on Earth where a whopping 90% of all earthquakes occur. It's called the Ring of Fire, and it stretches around the Pacific Ocean from New Zealand all the way to South America. Hmm, looks to me more like a horseshoe. Anyway. Experts claim that these countless earthquakes are caused by the abundance of volcanoes in that region and the constant movement of the tectonic plates. Around half a million earthquakes happen on Earth every year, but many of them occur very, very deep in the Earth's crust, and only special equipment can detect them. We feel around 20% of earthquakes, and only 100 of them can cause damage. The largest recorded earthquake occurred in Chile in May 1960. It was a magnitude 9.5 on the Richter scale. It was truly devastating. During that earthquake, 
seismographs detected and recorded seismic waves that traveled all over the world. They shook the planet for many days. As for the most powerful earthquake that occurred in the U.S., it was 9.2 and happened in Alaska. By the way, Alaska, along with California, is the most earthquake-prone state in the U.S. and one of the most seismically active regions in the world. A magnitude 7 earthquake occurs there almost every year. A mega-earthquake can actually shorten the length of a day for the entire planet. NASA claims that really large earthquakes can shift our planet's axis and, thus, change the duration of a day. Now, of course, you won't notice it since this change is measured in microseconds, and one microsecond is one millionth of a second. Scientists think that the 9.1 Sumatra earthquake, which occurred in 2004, shortened the day by 6.8 microseconds. Now, not even the best specialists can predict an earthquake. That's mostly because the mechanisms that trigger earthquakes are extremely deep underground. But these days, people have learned how to figure out a more precise time frame of when an earthquake might occur. Earthquakes can be triggered by volcanic eruptions or, let's say, meteor impacts. But most of them are caused by the movements of our planet's tectonic plates. Earth's surface consists of 15 to 20 constantly moving tectonic plates. Pressure increases when they shift, and this can make the crust of our planet break. San Francisco is moving toward Los Angeles right at this moment. The speed of its movement is about 2 inches per year. That's as fast as your fingernails grow. It's happening because the two sides of the San Andreas Fault, which is the continental fault extending 750 miles through California, are slipping past each other. So, in several million years, Los Angeles and San Francisco will be neighbors. Lakes, ponds, and canals become slightly warmer and start to stink before an earthquake. It happens because gases get released when tectonic plates shift. Most animals feel these signs and change their behavior. For example, scientists noted toads completely disappearing before an earthquake in Italy in 2009. But as soon as the natural disaster was over, they returned. Even after an earthquake is over, you might still see water sloshing around in your swimming pool. There's no need to worry. This is a phenomenon called a seiche. The water can keep sloshing around for hours after the earthquake is over. For example, the pool at the University of Arizona lost some water from a seiche caused by an earthquake in Mexico that occurred 1,200 miles away. On February 27, 2010, a massive earthquake started in Chile. It measured 8.8 on the Richter scale. As a result, Earth's crust in that region was ripped so dramatically that a city called Concepcion moved 10 feet to the west. Another earthquake resulted in the tallest mountain in the world, Everest, shrinking by one inch. It happened in 2015 when a magnitude 7.5 earthquake caused several Himalayan mountains to decrease in size. The Japanese used to believe that earthquakes were caused by Namazu, a giant catfish that lived submerged in the mud under the Japanese islands. The fish would thrash about, causing seismic activity. As for the ancient Greeks, they were sure that a powerful sea deity, Poseidon, produced earthquakes by hitting his trident against the earth when he was angry. According to Hindu mythology, Eight elephants hold Earth in place. They are, in turn, balanced on the back of a ginormous turtle, standing on the coils of an even larger snake. And every time any of these animals moves, an earthquake occurs. About 8 billion inhabitants of planet Earth found out the same terrible news in one day. Someone saw it on TV. Others heard it on the phone while scrolling through social media or listening to music. Some witnessed this news in a dream while sleeping. Someone's voice said it in all languages to ensure everyone understood it. I have good news and bad news for you. Let's start with the bad news. You're all characters in YouTube videos in which your planet gets into a situation where the moon breaks in half. For the audience, it will be a hypothetical story, but for you, these events will become a reality. The good news is that I was joking. There is no good news. But don't worry, the apocalypse won't start on your planet. Maybe just a little bit. Have a nice day! At first, the entire population panics. Then, a few days later, everyone calms down. Maybe it was a mass hallucination, and the moon will be alright. 
but at this moment, scientists have discovered the danger. A colossal meteorite is flying towards us from the distant depths of space. This meteorite is super fast and pretty flat, but has sharp edges. Fortunately, it will miss the Earth by a few thousand miles, but the Moon won't be that lucky. The meteorite flies through our Earth's only natural satellite directly in the middle. So it passes through the Moon, sweeps past our planet, and flies away into distant space. At this moment, all people can't take their eyes off the Moon. The meteorite cuts it perfectly in half, gently, clearly, painlessly. So, what shall we do now? Will the Earth survive this? Our satellite breaks into two equal parts, but fortunately, they don't fly away from each other. The Moon's great gravity attracts them back like a magnet. Scientists are sure that the parts will connect in a couple of billion years, and the Moon will become the same as it used to be. But the coolest thing is that people won't feel any changes. Everyone around the world will celebrate this good news. The voice was wrong. But then, another problem appears. A massive meteorite in the form of a shoe is flying from the deepest space to us. It enters our solar system and approaches the Earth at high speed. The space boot crashes into one half of the Moon and then flies away. Now, the Moon is definitely breaking into two parts. The first half remains in the same place. The second one is flying towards us. A small meteor shower begins on Earth because of the falling Moon fragments. But it's not so bad. Most of these rocks are burning up in the atmosphere. But almost the entire split-off half is falling apart around the orbit of our planet. It forms a stone belt. Now the Earth is like Saturn. Rotating fragments destroy part of our artificial satellites. Communication and the Internet work inconsistently. It takes people a couple of years to restore a stable connection. The International Space Station no longer exists. Luckily, all the astronauts managed to return to Earth before half the Moon got to them. So, Moon rocks are flying around the planet, and people see half the Moon in the sky. Life doesn't change much for the first few days, but those who live on the coast of the seas and oceans notice the consequences. The Moon used to influence the tides. It was flying around the Earth and made oceans take an oval shape. There were tides on the side where the Moon was closer. There were ebbs on the opposite side. But now, this schedule is wrong. Half of the Moon attracts less water. Yes, the Moon lost half its weight and began approaching the Earth. But its gravitational force has become weaker. Seabirds, many species of fish, sea turtles, and other coastal animals may not survive these changes. Their natural instincts associated with the Moon help them determine the time for getting food, breeding, and flying south. For example, tiny turtles expect a strong tide in the morning. They run to the water, but the water doesn't reach them. Turtles can't hide in the ocean in time and become dinner for seagulls. Crabs can't lay eggs because the tide has started earlier than usual. Wolves go mad in the woods. They howl loudly every night and can't stop. The whole natural world can't understand what's going on. The human body is also feeling some discomfort. Many people have low and high blood pressure, and some experience severe headaches. Half of the Moon changes the entire ecosystem of the planet. Adapting to new conditions will take several tens, maybe hundreds of years. A couple of weeks pass, and people notice the days are now shorter. The Moon always slowed the Earth's rotation and made one day last 24 hours. The Earth is spinning faster now. The night and the morning come earlier than everyone is used to. Earth rotation speed has increased and reduced the number of hours per day to 15. People suffer from insomnia or oversleeping. The body needs time to get used to it. Work schedules are changing all over the world. Previously, people came to the office at 9 and left at 6. Now, they arrive at 7 and leave at 2 p.m. Sleep time got shorter, and people are really sad because of this. Progress slows down because the short working time. The technologies of the future are now 20 to 30 years late. Hourly pay remains the same, so bosses now pay less for fewer working hours. The whole moon stabilized the weather and climate on the planet. Look at Mars. It has two small moons. They quickly spin around it and rock Mars around on its axis. As a result, strong winds, sandstorms, and thunderstorms often happen on the red planet. 
Now the half of the moon that approached us takes the Earth out of stable rotation. This changes the seasonal temperatures in the world. It even gets hotter in hot places. And snowstorms are raging in cold regions. There are short, massive downpours instead of sunny weather. A typical breeze can grow into a hurricane and small waves into a tsunami. The seasons are changing faster now. Winters are colder and summers are hotter. Changing the rotation of the planet affects the Earth's magnetic field. Since the compass and navigation systems are unstable now, we need to recalculate where the north and south are. Birds can't fly south to wait out the winter since they don't know what direction to fly. Their inner compass is broken. Several hundred years have passed. People are entirely accustomed to the new conditions on Earth. New species of animals and fish have appeared. Birds can navigate the sky by the moon again. The planet's economy has been restored. Hourly wages have become higher. People now get enough sleep from five to six hours a day and work for four to five hours. The reduction of day and night has also affected the entertainment industry. Movies now last one hour. One episode of some TV series lasts 30 minutes. Life goes faster. An average person now lives to be 96 years old. In fact, the passage of time hasn't changed at all. Its calculus did. Several thousand years have passed. People look different now. Now they have big eyes that absorb more light. Half of the moon doesn't shine as bright as the whole thing, so the nights have become darker. It took the human eye a couple of thousand years to develop the ability to see clearly in this new dark. Animals need to navigate better in these conditions, so their eyes have become larger and more sensitive. During all this time, people have cleared the orbit of moon rocks. Several space stations fly around our planet. And again, people hear this strange voice that once told them that they were all characters in one hypothetical YouTube video. This time, the voice says, Your story ends because the video ends. I'm sorry. Good night. Recently, Chinese scientists discovered something interesting on the moon, an unusual crystal. Moreover, they found out that this crystal contains an element that can literally replace nuclear fuel. Let's find out more. The composition of the moon has long remained a mystery to us. Half a century has already passed since the Apollo mission. Unfortunately, we haven't traveled to the moon much since then, so it's not surprising that it's not so easy for us to study it. But recently, we've made a breakthrough in this area. In December 2020, Chinese scientists sent the Chang'e 5 probe to the moon. The mission was named after the ancient Chinese deity of the moon, Chang'e. Quite poetic, isn't it? Anyway, after the probe went to the nearest side of the moon, it spent several days digging through the surface and rocks and then returned to Earth. In total, it collected about four pounds of various lunar rocks, like basalt, solidified lava, and so on. And yeah, maybe it doesn't sound too impressive, but it's actually a mini breakthrough. After all, we hadn't received any lunar samples since 1976. And these samples are very important for learning the history of our world. We've been struggling for many years to find out, for example, how the moon was born at all. Yes, there were a lot of theories, but we still couldn't find any proper evidence for any of them. But thanks to the latest missions and some computer simulations, scientists finally found out the truth. The moon was born when some random dwarf planet crashed into our Earth many millions of years ago. This dwarf planet was slightly smaller than Mars. The fragments of the Earth went into space, but some of them stayed in our orbit. Then they stuck together and formed the moon. It sounds horrifying, but in reality, the birth of the moon was the best thing to ever happen to our planet. If it weren't for this beautiful satellite, all our oceans would be small puddles. Life wouldn't have appeared on Earth at all. So this is already an amazing discovery, but that's still not all. Studying the collected rocks, scientists from the Beijing Research Institute discovered something unusual, a rare lunar crystal. Looks pretty boring, doesn't it? just some tiny transparent monocrystal about the thickness of a human hair. We've already found such things on the moon before. These crystals were formed as a result of volcanic activity, just like some garnets on the Earth. And yep, 
The place where they discovered these crystals also suffered from volcanoes 1.2 billion years ago. That means that this tiny baby is over a billion years old. But that's not the most important thing. It's the fact that this crystal is made of a unique material, the one that we've never seen before. Researchers from the International Mineralogical Association have confirmed that such a composition can't be found anywhere on Earth. The crystal was named Chongasite, again after the same moon deity. And this is another achievement. This is the sixth previously unknown mineral that we found on the moon and the first one found by China. Now, it has become the third country in the world to make such a lunar discovery. However, this tiny crystal still wasn't the only remarkable thing they found. After studying this gem and about 140,000 other lunar particles, scientists have discovered something else. They found helium-3. Why is it so important? Because this is one of the elements that feed the sun and other stars in our universe. We tend to say stuff like, put out the sun, the sun is burning, and so on. And this is one of the reasons why many people actually think that the sun is a huge fireball. But it's not. Its burning is actually a completely different process, which is called nuclear fusion. The process itself is quite simple. During this reaction, hydrogen in the star turns into helium. But this simple process is actually one of the most violent and insane reactions in the universe. There's a real boiling broth of particles inside the sun. The hydrogen nuclei that jump and rush there are constantly repelling each other since all of them are positively charged. And so they could continue to boil and chill around without bothering anyone if it weren't for the stars. The stars turned out to be cheaters. They have such strong gravity that they basically grab billions of these little atoms and squeeze them together. Combining with each other, these atoms create new heavy elements, like the mentioned helium. And when this happens, they throw a lot of energy into space. And that's how the sun burns. At the same time, it spreads so much energy that we can't even imagine. Okay, so what is helium-3? Well, this is an element to which even the sun can say, whoa dude, you should calm down. The fusion of helium-3 atoms releases even more energy than in typical nuclear fusion. And most importantly, it doesn't pollute the atmosphere with harmful things like radiation. We have very, very little helium-3 on Earth. Its prevalence in our atmosphere is about one in a million. And besides, it's constantly trying to escape from us back into space probably feel some bad vibes from us. However, scientists have recently found out that there's a place that contains a lot of this element. Yep, you guessed it, it's the moon. We think that there's more helium-3 on the moon than on Earth because of the solar winds. The sun has been hammering on the moon with its helium-3 for billions of years, so now it's all over the place. It's still not too much if you compare it, for example, with Jupiter or Saturn. But don't forget how much energy it can release. For your information, with only 25 tons of helium-3, it's possible to provide America with energy for an entire year. Now, there are 35,000 tons of it here on Earth, and more than a million tons on the Moon. Only these sources could feed the entire US for thousands of years. So basically, in the future, helium-3 may become a new source of fuel. And it's better than nuclear fuel in basically everything. Helium-3 won't leave any harmful waste and radiation. It's more powerful and not that dangerous. In other words, this environmentally friendly and efficient energy could be a revolution for our planet. Sounds cool, huh? So, what are we waiting for? Grab the shovels, you might say. But there's a little problem here. Unfortunately, we haven't yet come up with anything as wildly strong and hot as the stars. To use helium-3, we need crazy temperatures and pressure. We need a thermonuclear reactor, and we have no idea how to build it. Yet. And even if we could heat it up to such temperatures and get the needed pressure, we still don't really know how to handle helium-3 correctly. Therefore, 
even if we have an infinite amount of helium-3, we still won't be able to use it. But still, there's a great power behind helium-3, so it's not surprising that different countries have already started a race for nuclear resources. Now that Chang'e 5 has discovered a new helium-3 deposit on the nearest side of the moon, this race can become downright global. For example, China already plans a new lunar mission in 2024, Chang'e 6. During this mission, they want to collect the first samples from the far side of the moon. As you can see, finding this lunar crystal was very important for us. These crystals can help us find new ways to create helium-3. And if we manage to do that, humankind will enter a new era. But to do this, we still have to solve a number of problems. How to deliver a bunch of these lunar crystals to Earth, how to make them produce energy, and so on. Let's hope that in the future these issues will be resolved and we'll find a way to produce clean, safe, unlimited energy.